We've come all the way to Switzerland today to the Sauber F1 team and I am currently sitting on Robert Kubitz's 2008 Sauber F1 car. He won the Canadian Grand Prix in this car, but I want to know what's going on inside it. So Sauber have done all the hard work for us. They have cut this car in half. Come and check it out. Looks pretty normal from this side, but come over here to the other side. Check it out. Look what is missing. The entire left side. I'm going to give you a tour of my best bits and favourite parts of this cutaway car. So we'll start at the beginning, right at the front. Here it is. The front of the car all created in honeycomb carbon fibre. Look at that. Look at the detail. It's unbelievable. Now these cars go through massive testing at the beginning of the year. If they fail the crash testing, they can't actually compete in F1. So vital that this part is strong enough to protect the driver. First bit you come to, the brake fluid reservoir. Now all the fluid comes down through this pipe into the brake master cylinder. That then fires it out through this to the brakes to stop the car. Pretty vital. And of course, someone's got to do the braking. So if we come down here, Nico Hulkenberg lent us his left shoe. Now, okay, it's on the right pedal, but you can see there's the accelerator and it's completely locked in the shoe because it's got these shoulders holding it in place. They don't want to be knocking the steering column. They don't want to be affecting the other foot. So it's really held in and there is absolutely no space. So I don't think I'd fit in one of these cars with my big feet. Then we move down here. We've got this wooden resin right at the bottom and that is the last layer of an F1 car. And just here in between the carbon fibre and the wood resin, you can see tungsten. Now this is ballast. The engineers and mechanics want to make the car as light as possible and then that gives them much more to play with when it comes to positioning the ballast. The drivers might want it at the front of the car, they might want it at the back of the car. And here above all that is a fire extinguisher. Yep, you've got a rubber casing here and then a carbon fibre outer layer. Now there's a compressed gas little piston here that fires it in if the driver pushes this button here that says fire. So, Mark Webber, perhaps he was thinking about the fire switch a couple of Grand Prix ago. That would have then triggered the piston. It then sends the gas in between the rubber and the carbon fibre and it gets shooted out and it gets squirted just out of here. There's a couple of little nozzles just here and then back here as well. In between, you can just see a little bit of red in that little gap there. But if we go back down here, this is where all the excitement's happening. Let me tell you. We've got some leg protection here above where Nico's leg would be. It's just made of foam, goes all the way along his legs. Very nice. And then back down here, we've got the team radio. So when you hear the drivers talking back to the teams in the pits, this is what is doing it all. Unbelievable to think it's just sat underneath their legs. Underneath that, you've got telemetry. So when Lewis Hamilton got into all that trouble for texting and tweeting his telemetry, that was where all the information had come from. And then this, this is effectively the computer on board the F1 car. It's unbelievable. Loads of little boards in there with lots of wires and cables. And then here, have you ever wondered how they do the timing? This is the FIA's little lap timers sitting neatly in here, just above that wooden resin and in between the carbon fiber. Now, it wouldn't be an F1 car without an F1 driver. Now this is Robert Kubitzer's, as I mentioned, from 2008. Because he's a little bit taller, they had to cut away his seat. Right here, they've just drilled a hole because the FIA has another rule. These cars are full of rules and regulations and you do not want to get them wrong. From here, at the top of the chassis to the top of the roll hoop, you cannot be taller with your helmet from the diagonal line between the two. So with Robert, they had to simply drill it away so he could fit in. <laughs> Otherwise, no racing for Kubica. Then behind Kubica, we've got the fuel cell. Lots of different compartments, and that's to make sure the fuel doesn't kind of swish around when the car's going along. So just in front of the fuel cell is this part that's actually quite squidgy, and this is to protect the driver and the helmet. And it's made of this foam, it's kind of memory foam. You can see it's springing right back and then there's a harder foam here to take the impact and this there's a nice little pull thing here you can take that off this is for the marshals in case there's something wrong with the driver and they can literally just pull that out really quickly and they're then able to lift the driver out in his seat as well so i'm going to leave that there perfect now 
it wouldn't be F1 without a little bit of secrecy. And there is a reason why there is a board over this part, the engine. It's a V8, it was made by BMW, and they could technically still sell one of these. So no peeking, but I can show you an engine over here. So here it is, a V8 engine. You can see all the exhaust, they've got to be the same length. So that's why they wiggle around each other. That is then bolted onto the gearbox. Here you go, you can see the gearbox housing and then the rotary dampers. We've got some suspension, all made of carbon fibre. Still very light though. You've got push rod and then that all comes out to the left rear tyre. I'm going to go back to the car now though. Come and see the rear wing. No DRS back in 2008, so no ability to adjust this rear wing. And of course, more crash testing at the back of the car, just as we had at the front of the car. This will all undergo crash testing at the beginning of the year. And again, no passing, no racing. And then my favorite part, it's a little accessory, but very, very important. This is your rain light, which will of course flash if it's pouring with rain. 